welcome. In this video, we are going to be reading the complaint from USA versus David Wayne DePap. This is the criminal complaint that is being brought forth by the US government against Mr. DePap for the incident that occurred at Nancy Pelosi's house with her husband. Most of you have probably already heard about that. But let's just jump right in. All right, U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California, this is coming out of California, United States of America versus David Wayne DePap. Don't have a case number up there yet though. Criminal complaint, it says, um, I, the complainant in this case, state that the following is true to the best of my knowledge and belief on or about the date of October 28, 2022 in the County of San Francisco in the Northern District of California, the defendant violated and there are two offenses that are listed here with the code sections. Assault on the immediate family member of a federal official. A attempted kidnapping of a federal official. This criminal complaint is based on these facts. Please see the attached affidavit of FBI SA Stephanie Minor. All right, here is the affidavit. Affidavit in support of application for complaint and arrest warrant. I, Stephanie Minor, a special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, being duly sworn, declare and state as follows. And just to give you a heads up, this is really only about eight pages, so not too long. We're going to start with this introductory section here. I make this affidavit in support of an application under Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure 3 and 4 for a criminal complaint and arrest warrant for David Wayne DePap. For the reasons set forth below, I submit that there is probable cause to believe that DePap violated the following. We've got Title 18 USC Section 115A1A by assaulting Paul Pelosi, an immediate family member of a United States official to wit, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, with intent to retaliate against such official on account of the performance of official duties. And Title 18 USC Section 1201D, by attempting to seize or kidnap a United States official, to wit, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. In summary, and as set out in more detail below, the facts of the investigation to date reveal that DePape was prepared to detain and injure Speaker Pelosi when he entered the Pelosi residence in the early morning of October 28, 2022. DePape had zip ties, tape, rope, and at least one hammer with him that morning. The evidence further shows that DePape assaulted Mr. Pelosi with DePape's own hammer. Paragraph two, I submit this affidavit for the limited purpose of securing a criminal complaint and arrest warrant. I have not included every fact known to me concerning this investigation. Instead, I have set forth only the facts to establish probable cause that violations of the federal laws identified have occurred. Paragraph three, I have based my statements on this affidavit on my training and experience, personal knowledge of the facts and circumstances obtained through my participation in this investigation, information provided to me by other agents and law enforcement officers, information provided by reports of other law enforcement officers, information provided by audio recording evidence, as well as video and photographic evidence, and information provided by records and databases. Where I refer to conversations and events, I often refer to them in substance and in relevant part rather than in their entirety or verbatim, unless otherwise noted. This affidavit also reflects my current understanding of the facts relating to this investigation. That understanding may change as the investigation proceeds. In addition, my experience and training as an FBI special agent also forms the basis of the opinions and conclusions set forth below. Affiant background. Paragraph four, I'm a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation and have been an FBI agent since 2019. I am currently assigned to the San Francisco field office 
Oakland resident agency where I specialize in investigations of domestic terrorism. I primarily investigate United States persons who commit violent criminal acts in furtherance of their political or social ideology. I have participated in several investigations of individuals that committed criminal acts in furtherance of ideological goals to include militia violent extremists. I successfully completed the approximately 21 week new agent training at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. During that time, I received training in physical surveillance legal statutes and procedures, confidential source management, and electronic surveillance techniques. I've also assisted with the execution of search warrants in numerous domestic terrorism investigations. Paragraph five, as an FBI agent, I'm authorized to investigate violations of United States law, and I'm an I'm a law enforcement officer with the authority to execute warrants issued under the authority of the United States. Number six, I'm an investigator and law enforcement officer of the United States within the meaning of 18 U.S.C. section 2510-7. I am empowered by law to conduct investigations, to execute search warrants, and to make arrests for offenses of federal law. So there you have her background. Let's go over the applicable statutes here. Paragraph seven, Title 18, U.S. Code Section 115A1A in relevant part states, and this is in reference to the criminal complaint and arrest warrant, whoever assaults, kidnaps, or murders, or attempts, or conspires to kidnap or murder, or threatens to assault, kidnap, or murder, a member of the immediate family of a United States official with intent to impede, intimidate, or interfere with such official while engaged in the performance of official duties or with intent to retaliate against such an official on account of the performance of official duty shall be punished as provided in section B. Paragraph eight, Title 18, U.S. Code Section 1201A and 1201A5 in relevant part states, whoever unlawfully seizes, confines, okay, I don't even know what this next word is, decoys, kidnaps, abducts, or carries away and holds for ransom or reward or otherwise any person except in the case of a minor or by the parent thereof when... And number five, the person is among those officers and employees described in section 1114 of this title and any such act against the person is done while the person is engaged in or on account of the performance of official duties shall be punished. Further in relevant part, title 18 USC 1201D states, whoever attempts to violate subsection one shall be punished by imprisonment for not more than 20 years. 20 years is a long time. That gives us the background. We know a little bit about a special agent, the FBI special agent who was involved with the investigation that took place for this incident. We now know a little bit more about the charges. That's helpful. Now we're gonna jump into the facts because I think this is you know, what we're most familiar with. We have bits and pieces. We get glimpses of it through news reports and media, social media, that sort of thing. But let's actually look at the facts that were used to say, hey, there's enough probable cause here. Okay, let's jump into that. Facts supporting probable cause. Events at the Pelosi House in San Francisco, California on October 28, 2022, paragraph number nine. On October 28, 2022 at 2.23 a.m., San Francisco Dispatch received a 911 call from Paul Pelosi, located at the Pelosi residence in San Francisco, California. Pelosi stated words to the effect of, there is a male in the home and that male is going to wait for Pelosi's wife. Pelosi further conveyed that he does not know who the male is. The male said his name is David. Paragraph 10, at 2.31 a.m., San Francisco Police Department Officer Colby Wilms responded to the Pelosi residence, California, and knocked on the front door. When the door was open, Pelosi and DePape were, DePap were, ho were both holding a hammer with one hand, and DePap had his other hand holding on to Pelosi's forearm. Pelosi greeted the officers. The officers asked them what was going on. DePap responded that everything was good. Officers then asked Pelosi and DePap to drop the hammer. Okay, let me just...
stop there for a second because this sort of sets up the framework here. First of all, we get an understanding of what time of the morning this is. So I'm sure, you know, you're in the bed asleep, dreaming whatever dreams you're dreaming or nightmares and you're awakened. So it's very interesting. There's not that part that's in here, but it would be interesting to, to understand what took place between the point in time where we first hear that you know Pelosi made this 911 call. I know at some point in time we're going to talk about him waking him up or something like that. But yeah, so let's get a little bit more into this to see what else happened. Now, we're on page 5 now out of 8 pages. So I'm hoping for some more information here. Paragraph 11. Depat pulled the hammer from Pelosi's hand and swung the hammer, striking Pelosi in the head. Officers immediately went inside and were able to restrain Depat. While officers were restraining Depat, Pelosi appeared to be unconscious on the ground. Officers removed a cell phone, cash, clipper cards, and an un unidentified card from Depat's right shorts pocket. Depat provided officers his first and last name. After officers asked Depat if he had an ID on him, Depat said it might be in his backpack on the back porch and later stated his backpack was near the broken glass. When officers removed Depat from Pelosi's residence, police body-worn camera footage showed a glass door that appeared to be laminated glass broken near the door handle. San Francisco Police Department recovered zip ties in Pelosi's bedroom and in the hallway near the front door of Pelosi's residence. In addition, law enforcement searched Depap's backpack at the Pelosi residence and they found, among other things, a roll of tape, white rope, one hammer, one pair of rubber and cloth gloves and a journal. So this sort of paragraph gives us a little bit more information here about the backpack. So now we know that he had a backpack with him. We know all of these items. I think we had probably heard, you know, about some of these items that he brought with him, but now we know exactly what these items were. He didn't even just bring rubber gloves. He brought rubber and cloth gloves. I'm not sure why he would have brought both of those, but he did. Now we're gonna get into some witness statements. Paragraph 12, SFPD officer Colby Wilms, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, I hate that, was able to interview a witness, witness one, who saw an individual in all black carrying a large black bag on his back, walking near the Pelosi residence where witness one was parked. Witness one was working private security at an address nearby. Witness one then heard what sounded like banging on either a door or car and then heard the sirens within a minute or two. Paragraph 13, Pelosi was interviewed by SFPD officer Arianne Starks in the ambulance during transport to San Francisco General Hospital. Pelosi stated that he had never seen DePap before. Pelosi was asleep when DePap came into Pelosi's bedroom and stated he wanted to talk to Nancy. When Pelosi told him that Nancy was not there, DePap stated that he would sit and wait. Pelosi stated that his wife would not be home for several days and then DePap reiterated that he would wait. Pelosi was also was able to go into the bathroom, which was when he was able to dial 911. Pelosi stated that when the officers arrived, that was when DePap struck him with the hammer. So let me go back because there is a footnote in this section where he talks about that he wanted to talk to Nancy. And it says, I understand that when DePap refers to Nancy, he means Nancy Pelosi, Paul Pelosi's wife, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the United States. Because DePap referred to Speaker Pelosi as Nancy at various times, I refer to her by the same in the facts supporting probable cause. Paragraph 14, in a subsequent interview with law enforcement officers on October 30th, 2022, Paul Pelosi stated that DePap had a hammer with him during the events described above at the Pelosi residence. Further, the hammer did not belong to the Pelosi family. So now we get an understanding of where this hammer came from because when I first heard this, I thought, okay, so they're fighting over a hammer? Whose hammer was it? Where did it come from? Did they both have a hammer? I was trying to figure out what was going on when I was listening to the news reports. But now um, this complaint is making it very clear, uh, well, at least alleging some things, that the hammer did not belong to the Pelosi family, that DePap brought the hammer with him along with these other items, and that possibly all of these things may have been in this backpack also. Now we're going to sit down and we're going to go through the interview that took place with DePap. 
and it looks like it was an interview that took place with San Francisco Police Department officers. So let's go ahead and jump into that, break that down. Um, we're on page six now, so there's not much more to go through here, but let's, let's check into this and see what it says. Paragraph 15, in a Mirandized and recorded interview of DePap by San Francisco police officers, DePap provided the following information. DePap stated that he was going to hold Nancy hostage and talk to her. If Nancy were to tell DePap the truth, he would let her go. And if she lied, he was going to break her kneecaps. DePap was certain that Nancy would not have told the truth. In the course of the interview, DePap articulated he viewed Nancy as the leader of the pack of lies told by the Democratic Party. DePap also later explained that by breaking Nancy's kneecaps, she would then have to be wheeled into Congress, which would show other members. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> She would then have to be wheeled into Congress, which would show other members of Congress that there were consequences to actions. DePap also explained generally that he wanted to use Nancy to lure another individual to DePap. Okay, this is the first time I'm hearing about luring another individual. That's definitely concerning here. B says, DePap stated that he broke into the house through a glass door, which was a difficult task that required the use of a hammer. DePap stated that Pelosi was in bed and appeared surprised by DePap. DePap told Pelosi to wake up. DePap told Pelosi that he was looking for Nancy. Pelosi responded that she was not present. Pelosi asked how they could resolve the situation and what DePap wanted to do. DePap stated that he wanted to tie Pelosi up so that DePap could go to sleep as he was tired from having had to carry a backpack to the Pelosi residence. Around this time, according to DePap, DePap started taking out twist ties from his pocket so that he could restrain Pelosi. Pelosi moved towards another part of the house, but DePap stopped him and together they went back into the bedroom. If you're in your own home, first of all, if you're caught off guard by something like this, you're gonna be very surprised. What I'm sensing here though is that as much as anyone could be very afraid and fearful of what might happen, because you never know what somebody's intentions are, you never really know what they're going to do. In this case, um, you know, he was asleep and he was awakened. And so first of all, think about that because, you know, sometimes you wake up when you're sleeping and you don't know whether it's a dream, you know, you, you feel like, oh, I was just dreaming about something and you're not totally coherent. You don't have all of your faculties as you normally would during just the middle of the day. You probably are not trusting what's going on because you've got to pull yourself together. It's 2.30 a.m. in the morning. There's now someone in your bedroom. You're in your bed and you're just like, wait, what is going on? But what I'm hearing as I read this is that it sounds like it, things didn't get violent until later. It sounds like he was a person who was not in a rage or in a fit or overly excited. Of course, this is DePap's interview. We haven't heard Pelosi's interview yet. He could state something entirely different. But right now, it all seems a bit surreal because it it just sounds so non-confrontational given that he just broke into someone's house and is now talking about breaking someone's kneecaps. So as concerning, as concerning, and as very scary as all of this could be, there's still sort of this tone to it that just feels way, you know, lighter than it could be under the circumstances because it could be very horrible. C, while talking to each other, Pelosi went into a bathroom where Pelosi grabbed a phone to call 911. DePap stated he felt like Pelosi's actions compelled him to respond. So even at this point, um, the sort of, he, Pelosi is able to move about like even that is a little interesting I don't know and it could be entirely because I'm used to watching movies and they make them sit right there and they tie them up right then and who let somebody just walk around freely where they could just do anything D DePap remembered thinking that there was no way the police were going to forget about the phone call DePap explained that he did not leave after Pelosi's call to 911 because 
Much like the American founding fathers with the British, he was fighting against tyranny without the option of surrender. DePap reiterated this statement, this sentiment elsewhere in the interview. So you get a sense of his state of mind with this. E, DePap stated that they went downstairs to the front door. The police arrived and knocked on the door and Pelosi ran over to open it. Pelosi grabbed onto DePap's hammer, which was in DePap's hand. At this point in the interview, DePap repeated that DePap did not plan to surrender and that he would go through Pelosi. F, DePap stated that he pulled the hammer away from Pelosi and swung the hammer towards Pelosi. DePap explained that Pelosi's actions resulted in Pelosi taking the punishment instead. Now is where we're getting a few more details about what happened because I was listening to this on the news and I couldn't quite figure this part out. This whole part where they're at the door and then they both have their hands on the hammer and then DePap hits um, Pelosi. Trying to figure all of that out because there really wasn't this sort of explanation of, wait, they were in the bedroom, but then they all of a sudden they were at the door. But it says here, they went downstairs to the front door. Now it's still not clear why they were going downstairs. I'm not sure, it doesn't say. So why all of a sudden were they going downstairs? But then the police arrived, knocked on the door and Pelosi ran over and opened it. And that was a, a piece that had been left out before because it was sort of like, okay, so who opened the door? When was the door open? But it says Pelosi ran over and opened it. That is what's in this complaint. It says Pelosi grabbed onto DePap's hammer. And at that point, you know, Again, DePap is thinking, you know, I don't plan to surrender. And then I think that's when this all comes into play and he hits Pelosi. This next section talks about items found at DePap's residence. And this is seven. We're really wrapping this up now. Paragraph 16, on October 29, 2022, law enforcement determined that DePap lived in the garage of a residence on Shasta Street in Richmond, California by interviewing the owner of the premises who confirmed that DePap had resided in the garage for, garage for approximately two years. Paragraph 17 on October 29, 2022, law enforcement searched the garage at Shasta Street residence pursuant to a federal search warrant. Among other things, agents seized two hammers, a sword, a pair of rubber gloves and cloth gloves. The agents also found evidence that DePap lived in the garage, including DMV paperwork, IRS letters, and PayPal credit cards. Now we reach the conclusion. Paragraph 18, based on the information above, there is probable cause to believe that David DePap intentionally assaulted Paul Pelosi in violation of 18 USC section 115A1A and attempted to kidnap Speaker Nancy Pelosi in violation of title 18 USC section 1201D. Therefore, I respectfully request that the court issue a criminal complaint and arrest warrant against DePap. And this is um, signed by the special agent for the FBI, sworn um, to me over the telephone and signed by me pursuant to Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure, Honorable Thomas S. Hickson, United States Magistrate Judge. So that's it for the criminal complaint and arrest warrant for David Wayne DePap, the person who is accused of assaulting and assaulting the immediate family member of a federal official and attempting to kidnap a federal official. So that's it. Now we finally have the details of what was in the complaint. So that's it. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Let me know if you have any comments. Subscribe to the channel and peace.